Hello, Megan. Hello, everyone. Uh, I guess I don't know who else has joined us just yet. Uh, so I'll give it probably like another minute or two um, until I start going into a little bit about my background. And then uh, I'll open it up for uh, some questions. Hope everyone's having a good day today. I'm going to give it about another 30 seconds and then I'll start. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to uh, another Ask Me Anything uh, edition of from uh, Fantasy Playhouse Children's Theater and Academy. Uh, I am Eddie Stalzer. I work at the Walt Di at Walt Disney World here in Orlando, Florida, and I am currently a entertainment uh, production planner over at Epcot. Specifically, I work at the America Gardens Theater uh, located in America, which is a uh, pretty much right across the big lagoon as soon as you enter in the park and my job is to help coordinate all of the technical aspects of our shows and events that happen at the theater so most recently uh, before the Walt Disney World uh, furloughed a lot of its employees uh, we were in the middle of a concert series called the Garden Rocks concert series where we have a bunch of guest bands come in to uh, the America Gardens Theater to put on shows for our guests. And so my responsibilities would be contacting these guest artists to make sure uh, they I got everything uh, they needed for their performances. So that could be instruments like guitars, uh, bass guitars, drums, um, letting them know what their set times were gonna be, coordinating their sound check times, and then just uh, any other general questions they may have in terms of transportation or any other uh, technical uh, questions they may have about the theater. Um, I started my career at Disney uh, as an entertainment technician, and I specialize in audio. Um, so when I first came to the company, uh, I primarily was working a lot with the Disney Performing Arts and helping put on their live performances at a few are of the different venues across property. And I got to help work on a lot of different special events and new uh, live shows across the four different theme parks. I got to help open up uh, Jungle Book Alive with Magic back in the summer of 2016. I got to help with uh, Pixar Live, a symphony of characters, which was an orchestra show that uh, where the orchestra played all the music from the Pixar movies at Hollywood Studios. And then I've gotten to do uh, press events, uh, filming events, and um, just anything in, in there and, it, and it, in between. So uh, that's a little bit brief background of what I've been doing. Um, do we have any questions to start? If not, I have a couple sample ones that I can kind of go with to kind of just open up the floor a little bit.
All right, I'll start with a sample question. Uh, I'll start with uh, what do you love most about the job? Uh, what I love the most about my job is that it is never the same day in and day out. There are always different challenges to overcome. Um, oh. Perfect, okay, this is great. Yeah, what challenges uh, come with it being an outdoor venue? Uh, the biggest challenges most of the time is weather, especially in Florida and especially in the summer months, we get tons of storms and we get a lot of lightning. Uh, so when we do have those types of storms, we usually have to um, cancel our shows just due to it not being safe for our guests or performers uh, that uh, to be out on stage during a lightning storm. Um, other than that, uh, a lot of it is, to, is just trying to maintain our gear, which in the humidity and the dust and dirt and pollen, uh, our, our gear takes a big beating. And so we have to maintain it a lot. We have to um, go up in uh, our, our grid in the roof to clean a lot of our lighting fixtures, our speakers. Um, we deal with a lot of wildlife like squirrels and mice that like to chew through wires. So we're constantly testing gear and cables just to make sure uh, everything is working day in and day out. So that I would say is probably the most challenging being outside. It's just dealing with the weather and dealing with the animals. Okay, Megan Carter, do you have software or apps that you would suggest someone who wants to do what you do learn? Yes, uh, I have some, there's a couple different things. Um, so a lot of, uh, specifically what I do is, like I was saying, audio, and a lot of the future of audio is in audio networking, specifically uh, with this one protocol uh, called Dante, and a lot of audio devices use Dante, and uh, if you go, uh, Dante was a, pro uh, a networking protocol created by Audinate, and if you want, you could go to Audinate's website right now, and they have uh, free certification classes to learn more about their networking protocol, which has become at this point almost a standard across most uh, big venues. Uh, it's very useful in live events, um, in theaters, almost everything, either pieces of equipment or venues use some type of uh, Dante networking. So I'd highly recommend uh, doing that. And I can even, uh, let me just make sure I hit the website and I can put it in the chat real quick. Um, but yeah, they have, uh, the Audinate website is great. There's a bunch of um, resources. There's videos, really good videos. And like I said, you can take all their classes online for free right now, which has been uh, a great learning tool for a lot of our uh, technicians across property that have never gotten to use it before. So I definitely would highly recommend if people are interested in doing it, um, to take a look at it. And let me just put that link real quick. So that is the link if anyone wants to check out their, their classes. Uh, did you go to college for what you you do or did Disney offer training? Okay, so a little bit. So I went to college uh, at the University of Miami in Miami, Florida for music engineering. And so I got to do a lot of studio recording live recording and live sound reinforcement while at college. So I, that, that's kind of what I wanted to go into. Uh, after I graduated, I actually stayed at the university and I taught uh, students, college students, how to do live recording and live sounds for all the music schools, concerts, whether it's orchestras, jazz bands, choirs, etc. And then um, I got to Disney about four years ago and Disney does offer uh, quite a few training resources, and they also um, are pretty flexible uh, when you bring training resources up to leadership. So if there's a lot of there's been a lot of technicians that have been interested in a bunch of different training resources and the company uh, will pay for them a lot of the times. Um, and then a lot of it was just on the job training. There's a lot of experienced technicians at Disney World that have been doing live entertainment for many, many years, and they're just a wealth of knowledge. So uh, I a lot of it, so it was, it was kind of half and half. I went to school for it, and then I uh, got a lot of on-the-job experience as well. Chris, I'm glad you uh, like it. Yeah, it's a great source. Definitely look more into it.
Uh, I think, uh, okay, are there any specific skills you think a high schooler needs to know before they get to audio at the collegiate or professional level? Uh, Chris, to be honest, um, when I was in high school, I did nothing with audio engineering. I didn't do recordings. I didn't do live events. I was um, a performer all through high school. I played uh, percussion and drum set. And so I was in jazz band and marching band, and I played in the pit orchestra for the for the high school. I didn't do any of the live sound and audio stuff. And um, when I was graduating high school, um, I was struggling between doing some with computers or programming. And then I saw this like this whole world of audio engineering, and I got really interested. And really, I just uh, applied myself. Uh, to everything that was at my resource. Um, but I th think looking back, it would have been great to just be um, a part of some of the technical stuff in high school, whether it's just helping with theater, with the plays or anything like that. Um, but honestly, you know, the more you can do, even in a performance standpoint, like the more you know about just live entertainment and it's going to help you regardless if you're performing or you're trying to be go in a more technical aspect. Because just the more you know, it, it's going to be easier to do your job. It, you know, me coming from a performance background, I understand what performers want and what they need when I'm trying to help them. Uh, whether it's, you know, I'm miking them for a play or I'm trying to amplify this guitar cab. Like, I understand what the sound they're trying to look for because I've gotten to play in bands. I've gotten to play in a the theater. So really, um, I think just having a good attitude and willing to work hard and apply yourself um as best you can to everything and you you'll end up learning a lot. I hope that kind of answers your question. The other thing that I may now that the internet is so wide and varied, especially now with all this downtime, uh, you can go on YouTube and you can look up uh, videos from different mix engineers that tour with bands and just like listening to them and uh, hearing how they approach problems and stuff is is very interesting and I, I try to do that when I can as well. Megan, how many production planners are in Epcot's America? All the other countries have production planners too. Okay, so uh, America only America has the America Gardens Theater has two production planners, myself and uh, one other colleague. And then the park itself has another for the whole rest of the park, not country specific. The whole rest of the park has six production planners. And Epcot is a little bit unique uh, compared to the other parks because of Epcot is very event based. And so there's tons of events happening throughout the park at any different time, whether it's a Disney event or if there is a, a corporate event where Corporations come in and they rent out some of our spaces to have some of their own private events, whether it's a private dinner, private award ceremony, um, a wedding. There's tons of weddings that happen at Epcot uh, in the early, early mornings or the late, 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 late evenings before park open or after park close. And so those six other production planners help with those events that happen throughout the rest of the park. Uh, the reason why America, the America Garden Center has two specifically just dedicated to it is that there are events and shows going in that theater 24-7, 365 days a year. There is not a single down day between we have um, at the top of the year, starting in January, we have a Disney uh, Broadway concert series where we bring uh, Broadway stars to sing a bunch of Disney Broadway classics. Right after that, we go into the springtime where we have our Garden Rocks concert series. We're bringing in guest bands, so we're bringing in people – uh, like the Guess Who, Starship, we've had um, Sugar Ray. Uh, we were supposed to get this year, and we have a bunch of these people that come in. And then, and then in the spring or in the summer, we have our own Disney show, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy show, where we play. Uh, we have a rock band that plays the songs to those from those movies. In the fall, we have another concert series, and then in the winter, we have our Christmas show there. So there's not a lot of downtime. The hours do vary quite a bit, um, especially especially uh, in between the shows when we are uh, tearing down, wrecking one show, and we're setting up for another. Uh, usually we have two different crews. We'll have a day 
daytime crew and a nighttime crew. And so we'll have someone, we'll have a crew of about four to six working nine to five. And then we'll have another four to six uh, techs working from usually like four to, to midnight. So uh, those, those hours can vary. And then um, once we get into a series or a show, it's a little bit more stable. Um, but in general, any type of events, it can vary just depending on what happens and things will change all the time. But it does keep things very interesting because you never know what's going to happen. Do I have a favorite event gone sideways story? Uh, yes, I think I do. Um, one of the events I got to work on uh, this past year is the uh, Disney Fairy Tale Wedding series. Um, and we were shooting this fairy tale wedding in the uh, uh, pavilion in Epcot. And uh, so I was here to help with kind of just the live uh, audio reinforcement for the wedding, for the people that were actually there to, you know, the family and everything else. I wasn't really dealing too much with the film aspect of it, just to make sure that the uh, family could hear the, you know, the, the past and the bride and the groom and all that and then at the end they had a special guest artist come up to sing one of their favorite songs and right before that happens we start ha start having a lot of uh, wireless mic issues and I had to leave to leave the booth in a dead sprint run all around the country so I wasn't in the camera shot get to her mic crouch behind a little bush fix it and then run all the way back around before she she went up and then realized that our antenna were also not in a good spot and so i actually had to physically hold up the antenna and i became the the wireless antenna for that mic and i had to stand in one position for about 45 minutes and my shoulders had never been sore since then but it still went off without a hook but that could have gone sideways pretty quickly Yeah, it was a, uh, it was, it was surely something, and it was, you know, 95 degrees out and sunny and hot, so it, it was something. But you know, that's kind of how live entertainment is. That's what makes it exciting is you just don't know what's going to happen, and you just have to think on your feet sometimes. And you know, in the moment, you're panicking, but at the end, you're like, wow, you know, we made this happen. And the guests didn't know anything. The guest performer didn't know any different. You know, it just went off without it for them. So you know, that's what that's what makes it fun. Do you have a favorite group you've gotten to see so far? Yeah, there's actually been a few uh, favorite groups. Um, there, I'll go. I'll go with like one older school group, '80s group, and then one newer group. Uh, there's this uh, '80s, I guess you could say, rock synth group, uh, a flock of seagulls. Um, if you if you pull them up on Spotify, you're gonna know some of their their tunes uh, but they came here last spring and we actually got to uh mix them we got to do uh, our front of house audio for them and we got to do monitors for them and it was just a blast working with them they were such great people and their music was just so it was just fun it was just a really fun show and then this past fall there was this uh funk soul group uh called southern avenue and if you haven't listened to them and you're into that type of music, check them out on Spotify or anywhere else. But again, just another young group. But uh, these these musicians were just super talented, super nice, and just amazing to work with. Just and fun music. And again, we got to do we got to meet them. We got to do monitors for them, and it was just a, a real blast. Yeah, flock of seagulls. Yeah, they were quite. A and they were actually supposed to come back uh, this spring too, but unfortunately we closed before they came here. So, but yeah, they're a great, they're a great band, really great band. And uh, their lead singer and the lead of that band actually lives locally in Orlando. So yeah. Do you ever have to do design work or is it mostly facilitation slash execution? So we have, 
stuff. Um, there, at, in, there is a whole department, uh, Disney Parks Live Entertainment, and they have uh, a bunch of audio designers there that are kind of a very high level where they will design a lot of new shows, uh, venue aspects, and stuff like that. Um, so for certain things, um, we are, we're kind of just executing, uh, at Epcot, it's a, uh, and it's certain places, it's a little bit different, especially with events, uh, with a lot of these, like, let's say pop-up events, um, whether it's like the, that Italy wedding I was talking about, or it's just, uh, you know, a, a speaker that's talking about this new ride that's happening somewhere. Uh, usually those don't get assigned an audio designer and it's up to the lead audio technician to come up with a gear list and a plan to execute how they want to run the event and so i've gotten to do a lot of that and a lot of the production planning is a lot like that. so if i was assigned to have this event um i would say okay well i know we're gonna have a five-piece band it's gonna be drums bass guitar keys and a singer okay well that so now i need to start planning out my money that i need i'm going to plan out a small sound system or a large sound system depending on where it's going to be played at um monitors what kind of console do i want how many cables do i need how many power cables do i need and uh, edison you know power grips and all that and so you get to really build it from the ground up yourself um there's some shows like uh that are like your kind of normal daily op shows, like let's say the uh, British Revolution in the UK pavilion. That show was designed from an audio designer. The PA was designed from an audio designer. And techs learn how to mix the show. But then after that, the audio designer is gone. So if there's any problems that arise or if gear gets broken, it's really up to the audio technician to uh, troubleshoot and to fix things if possible. Renee, we saw the Beach Boys there during one of our trips in the past 10 years. Yeah, they came here many years ago. That was before my time on Ford, but I heard they were a blast. Hey, Eddie, what was your dream role at Disney? My dream role at Disney, uh, I think right now moving forward, is to move more into the audio designer role to help with uh, new facilities and new shows that come out. Especially right now, the parks are going through a lot of construction. Uh, Epcot is now a lot of construction. There's also two new big new cruise ships, three, sorry, that will be coming out at some point. They're going to need have a lot of new entertainment uh, venues and shows and to kind of work from that from a high-level design view and then kind of see them implemented is something that I would really uh, enjoy doing. Do you have a preference in audio brand? Uh, for me, or at Disney in general, for consoles, we use Yamaha primarily. Yamaha, great consoles. Uh, they're and they're super reliable. Um, I've seen a console get dumped uh, dumped on with a bunch of water, and we let it air for about a couple hours and turn it back on, and everything was fine. So in Florida, I mean, anything that can be robust like that is fantastic, and Yamaha is a really great brand of consoles for that. And like I said, they're super easy to learn, and when you kind of learn one of their consoles, you've pretty much learned them all. Done a really good job through the years. Uh, when they're innovating new stuff, that they keep everything in game, so people aren't having to relearn a new console. So it's just like, oh, okay, there's this is like what it, the old one used to be, but now there's just more bells and whistles. Like, okay, that's cool. So I definitely recommend Yamaha for uh, live consoles. Uh, Kristen, do you prefer working on live events or recording mixing? Uh, for me personally. I prefer working on live events. I, I do some studio recording when I was still in the Miami area. I would do uh, I love, uh, classical recording. Uh, I barely worked with um, classical pianists. I worked with a violin piano duo that was uh, doing a bunch of recording, a bunch of uh, box sonatas to put out on CD. Um, so I wasn't doing anything uh, crazy studio wise, but I. I dumb, uh, but I prefer the the live event, uh, or it's just more exciting for me. The challenges that come up with it, that come with them, are more exciting. And yeah. What am I doing? 
Okay. We got any any other questions? Or any other just general doesn't even have to be tech, any general questions or anything like that. Chris Carter, what colleges would you recommend for students wanting to go into audio? Um, I know uh, there's a lot of people uh, in, around here in Florida, they go to Full Sail, and there's nothing wrong with Full Sail. It is a, uh, it is a good school. Um, there's a lot of good people there. It's just kind of like with anything, you, you get what you put into it. Uh, the the school I went to, the University of Miami, has a great and long history, a uh, long program uh, uh music engineering, which has been great. And the, the thing that I liked about that program is that I got to uh, still perform in the band and do a lot of other music classes. Um, but I know that's not for everybody, which is fine. Uh, really, um, I only applied to three schools when I was going to uh, looking for college and. One was at NYU. They have a great music technology program. Uh, the other was the University of Miami, where I eventually went to, and the other one was Penn State. And um, so the University of Miami for me was just a great program, good good uh, faculty, and I like the location. But really, uh, I just do your research. There's plenty of school, a lot more schools now, even when I went to college uh, 11 years ago now, when I first started, there's tons programs now that are starting these audio engineering um, programs because it's become a, a big thing and really or, or a technical theater is another program that a lot of schools have and, and with anything like that I, I say just do everything and anything because even if you end up not liking it at least that's something you can cross off your list saying okay I'm not going to do that again but I've tried it and the experience is always going to help what so whether it's any, any type of line or or studio recording stuff you know i think the more things you can do and by yourself the better for sure uh yeah you're welcome chris i'm glad uh, i'm glad to be here i'm, I'm glad i'm able to hopefully share some some interest uh some good thoughts megan favorite place to eat at disney for me it is the uh germany the uh the beer garden which is an all all you can eat uh german buffet with a live band entertaining you the whole time you're eating. it's a lot of food a lot of fun uh, it's family style, so you usually get um, paired up with another family, sitting all at the same table, and you just get to become one huge family and get to make some new friends while eating some really, really good food. That's my my favorite place to go for sure. Well, I think we're almost there now in terms of timing. But take one more question if anybody has any. But um, if not, I can also um, come up in the chat real quick. Uh, my, my email. So if you have any questions or if anyone has any more questions they want to ask or if they just it didn't come to them well, during this time, feel, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm currently furloughed, so I have plenty of time to answer emails. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, I, this was definitely a pleasure. A favorite? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the beer garden's great. That's just you just can't beat it. It's so much food, good time, good atmosphere, and it's inside. So if you come in the summer, you know it's a good escape from the heat. But yeah, so there is uh, my email. I spelled that. Yes, I did. Wayne Park. Okay. What was this? This sound check you have you ha ever had hmm strangest sound check I've ever had uh, I think the strangest sound checks I had let's see I think one of the strange ones is probably Kenny G he's just a very, very unique person and his sound check, uh, started at 11 p.m. and it went till about 3 30 in the morning and uh, we couldn't stop until he was happy and 
it's surprisingly hard to make him and his team happy. But uh, still, Joe, if you like Kenny G, but that was probably one of the more interesting, long sound checks I have I had, for sure. Another one on a, a little bit cra- kind of cooler note was uh, Joey Fatone of, N- of NSYNC. He brought a bunch of his friends here in the fall to perform just a bunch of songs. And, and um, well, we really didn't do a sound check with it. And it was all kind of done on the fly as he was performing. Uh, but they were all great people. And they were, and it actually worked out really, really well. So sometimes you get super, super long sound checks like a Kenny G. Or sometimes you get a Joey Fatone, and sometimes uh, you're just kind of doing it live and hoping that for the best, for sure. Sweet. All right. Well, with that, uh, I think I'm going to log off. Like I, I up in the chat, I did put in my email address, or I'm sure you can also get with Megan, and she can give you my email as well. But if anyone has any further questions, like I said, I have plenty of time to answer them. Um, I do want to. <laughs> I do want to thank. Uh, the Playhouse Children's Theater and Academy for bringing me on to do this. And um, please, please, please support them in any way you can, uh, whether it's monetary donations or when we get back up and running. Uh, donate your time, you know, work at the concession, uh, an usher, wherever you can. Um, the arts are definitely going to need need the help when we get up and running. And uh, I think we've all seen how important they are during this time. So, like I said, thank you, Playhouse Children's Theater and Academy. And I hope. You- you all, thank you.